evening. Our service is printed out for us on the bulletin and it's available in the back part of the uh, sacristy or the uh, uh, entry uh, if you didn't think to pick one up. I also understand we nor you normally sing a happy birthday to people that have reached their 90th or more birthday. And I guess you have one, uh, Daryl Martin. So the organist will lead us in, in the singing and then we'll continue with the hymn, Dear Christians, one and all rejoice.
the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. sun to its setting. In the name of the Lord is to be praised. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. You may be seated. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation, and you will say in that day, Give thanks to the Lord, call upon his name, and make known his deeds among the peoples. Proclaim that his name is exalted. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. Sing praises to the Lord, for he has done gloriously. Let this be known in all the earth. Shout and sing for joy, O inhabitants of Zion, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. Having heard the word of God, let us confess our sins to our Heavenly Father, imploring him for the sake of his Son, Jesus Christ, to grant us forgiveness. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, the poor miserable sinner, confess to you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them, and I pray you of your boundless mercy. merciful to you and strengthen your faith. Amen. Do you believe the forgiveness I speak is not my forgiveness, but God's? Yes. Let it be done for you as you believe. In the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the God of peace himself sanctify you completely and make your, may your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is faithful. He will do it. Amen. Blessed Lord, you have caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning. Grant that we may so hear them, read, mark, learn, and take them to heart, that by the patience and comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and ever hold fast to the blessed hope of everlasting life through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 
Our first lesson for this evening is from the book of Genesis, chapter 18, beginning at verse 17. The Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham what I am about to do, seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him? For I have chosen him, that he may command his children and his household after him to keep the way of the Lord by doing righteousness and justice, so that the Lord may bring to Abraham what he has promised him. Because then the Lord said, Because the outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and their sin is very grave, I will go down to see whether they have done altogether according to the outcry that has come to me. And if not, I will know. So the men turned from there and went towards Sodom, but Abram stood before the Lord. Then Abraham drew near and said, Will you indeed sweep away the righteous with the wicked? Suppose there are fifty righteous within the city. Will you then sweep away the place and not spare it for the fifty righteous who are in it? Far be it from you to do such a thing, to put the righteous to death with the wicked, so that the righteous fare as, as the wicked. Far be that from you. Shall not the judge of all the earth do what is just? And the Lord said, If I find in Sodom fifty righteous in the city, I will spare the whole place for their sake. Abram answered and said, Behold, I have undertaken to speak to the Lord, I who am but dust and ashes. Suppose five of the fifty righteous are lacking. Will you destroy the whole city for lack of five? And he said, I will not destroy it if I find forty-five there. Again he spoke to him and said, Suppose forty are found there. He answered, For the sake of forty, I will not do it. Then he said, O oh, let not the Lord be angry, and I will speak. Suppose thirty are found there. He answered, I will not do it if I find thirty there. He said, Behold, I have undertaken to speak to the Lord. Suppose twenty are found there. He answered, For the sake of twenty, I will not destroy it. And then he said, O oh, let the, not the Lord be angry, and I'll speak again, but this once. Suppose ten are found there. He answered, For the sake of ten, I will not destroy it. And the Lord went his way when he had finished speaking to Abraham, and Abraham returned to his place. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second lesson is the letter of Paul to the people at Colossae, chapter 2, beginning at verse 6. Therefore, as you receive Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. See to it that no one takes you captive by philosophy and empty deceit according to human tradition, according to the elemental spirits of the world, and not according to Christ. For in him the whole fullness of the deity dwells bodily, and you have been filled in him, who is the head of all rule and authority. In him also you were circumcised with a circumcision made without hands, by putting off the body of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ, having been buried with him in baptism, in which you were also raised with him through faith in the powerful working of God, who raised him from the dead. And you who were dead in your trespasses and uncircumcision of your flesh, God made alive together with him, having forgiven us all our trespasses by canceling the record of debt that stood against us with its legal demands. This he set aside, nailing it to the cross. He disarmed the rulers and authorities and put them to open shame by triumphing over them in him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
I will praise you, Lord, with all my heart. Before the gods, I will sing your praise. I will bow down towards your holy temple. And will praise your name for, for your unfailing love and your faithfulness. For you have so exalted your solemn decree that, that it surpasses your name. When I called, you answered me. You greatly emboldened me. May all the kings of the earth praise you, Lord. When, when they hear what you have to read. May they sing of the ways of the Lord. For the glory of the Lord is great. Though the Lord is exalted, he looks kindly on the lowly. Though lofty, he sees them from afar. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve my life. You stretch out your hand against the anger of my foes. With your right hand, you say, The Lord will vindicate me. Your love, Lord, endures forever. We rise to receive the Holy Gospel. This evening's Gospel is Luke's Gospel, chapter 11, beginning at verse 1. Now Jesus was praying in a certain place. And when he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John taught his disciples. And he said to them, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day your daily bread and forgive us our sins, for we ourselves forgive everyone who is indebted to us. And lead us not into temptation. And he said to them, Which of you has a friend will go to him at midnight and say to him, Friend, lend me three loaves, for a friend of mine has arrived on a journey, and I have nothing to set before him. And he will answer from within, Do not bother me. The door is now shut. My children are with me in bed. I cannot get up and give you anything. I tell you, though he will not get up and give him anything because he is his friend, yet because of his impatience you will rise and give him whatever he needs. And I tell you, ask and it will be given you. Seek and it will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and the one who seeks finds, and the one who knocks it will be opened. What father among you of his son asks for a fish, will instead of a fish give him a serpent? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? If you then who are evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? This is the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks be to God. Forever, O Lord, your word is firmly set in the heavens. Lord, I love the habitation of your house, the place where your glory dwells. Blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, I love the habitation of your house, the place where your glory dwells. We share our Christian faith together with each other in words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, Continue with the sermon hymn, baptized into your name, most holy.
strength in our Redeemer. Amen. I bring you grace, peace, and mercy from God the Father, and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Text for our devotion together this evening is the Gospel lesson that was read just a few moments ago. Luke's Gospel, chapter 11, verses 1 through 13, where Jesus instructed his disciples that when they pray, they should lose the Lord's Prayer as we know it. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. And that they should ask him regularly for whatever it is they need in their life because he loves them dearly and answers their prayer. And then we pay a special attention at this point in time in verse 11. What father among you, if his son asks for a fish, will instead of a fish give him a serpent? If he asks for an egg, will give him a serpent, a scorpion. If you then who are evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? We maybe just for a few moments reflect on the day as it's unfolded before us beginning this morning. We might ask ourselves how many of us this morning, or any morning for that matter, where our first conscious thought, the first thing that came to mind when the light started to blink on in our minds and in our, in our lives, where our first conscious thought was a thought of God and His great goodness towards us. Did we consider the joy of a new day that was before us, a day of His grace and forgiveness? Were we thankful that our family was secure during the night? And were we grateful that we had strength and health for a new day of life in His world? That His pre precious presence was with us to help us with the difficulties of the coming day. That is the privilege of our Christian life and faith. The privilege of being constantly able to speak to God in prayer, knowing that in Christ Jesus our prayers are heard and answered. One dominant element and feature from the incident of the text before us is the theme that our, our God, our Father, hears and answers our prayers exclusively because of His great eternal love for us. The scene that Jesus portrayed for them is simple and instructive. A man comes to his friend at night. The friend has nothing to set before his visitor. So he goes next door and he implores his neighbor's help. The neighbor does not res responds with help, not because of their friendship, but he responded simply because he didn't want to be bothered anymore at that hour of the night. Now what family hasn't had a similar scene? The children want something. They keep after and they keep after and they keep after their parents until they finally give in for no other reason than to silence the constant begging and asking. To this scene, Jesus contrasts the love of God who answers our prayers not because of their persistence, but because of his love for us. He instructs his disciples and us to pray. To pray to him constantly. To pray insistently to ask, to seek, to knock, and everywhere to call upon him. To cast our cares upon him and to come to him because he cares for us. Our Lord Jesus and the Heavenly Father respond to our prayers and hear them not because of the way or the manner in which we pray, 
but because of his great love for us. Already given, proven, and demonstrated to us in the gift of his own Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. He has answered our greatest need and plea. We have received forgiveness and eternal life through the gift of his Son, who suffered, who died, and rose, so that we could be with him in his eternal heavenly home. Through Jesus Christ, God, our Father has claimed us as his own dear children, and has given us the privilege of dress, addressing him, the Creator, the Lord of the universe, the Lord of glory, the Almighty God of our salvation, to address him with the intimacy of a small, young toddler speaking to his loving father with the term Abba, which comes from the native language of Jesus and the Apostle Paul, meaning Daddy. The Heavenly Father, who loves us in Jesus Christ, and who in his love for us hears and answers our prayers as a father who can only give gifts that are good and beneficial to us, his children. In the text, Jesus compares the love of our Heavenly Father with the imperfect love of an earthly father who also gives helpful gifts to his children. There is no father here today who, if his child asked for a piece of candy or an apple, would give him a candy or an apple laced with a razor blade, with heroin, or methamphetamine. If earthly fathers, though imperfect, wouldn't think of doing such a thing to their children, just think of it, Jesus says, how much more blessed and beneficial are the gifts received from our Heavenly Father, who loved us with the gift of his own Son, Jesus Christ. In the asking, the seeking, and the knocking of our prayers, we can begin to look for and expect the Heavenly Father's answer to come to us, not with the power of a hydrogen bomb's explosion, but rather we focus day by day on the small indications that we can see each day that God is at work bringing the answer that we need in his own time and way. For his answer is day by day beginning to shape its, shape its good blessing or the final good intentions that God's love for has for us. God's love for us is not an indulgent, okay, yeah, whatever you ask, but a loving yes, sometimes no, and sometimes wait. As he sees and knows our needs, and what is best for us. He may answer us, yes. The parents of a one-year-old child who suddenly in the middle of the night became very ill with a high fever, rushed the child to the emergency room of the hospital. There an emergency doctor checked the child out and prescribed a medication. Parents sat that night at the bedside of the child, praying and pleading with God to be gracious and heal the child. In the morning, the child woke up, smiled and giggled, and wanted his bottle. He may answer, no. Herman Jensen, was a very close friend of mine in a former congregation. 
His job was to set up machinery and train workers to use that machine in Poland where his country was selling the machine. On one of his trips to Poland, his plane was seriously delayed in Chicago. When they finally got it up and going, it was nip and tuck as to whether or not he would be in time at the New York airport to board the plane for Poland. He prayed fervently, but missed his flight and was very disappointed. The next day, he heard that the flight that he was to have been flying on to Poland crashed over Germany and every person on, on board was lost. He then realized why God said no to his prayer. He may answer, wait. A young couple dearly wanted a child of their own, but for years they still had no child. They prayed long and hard to God, but still no answer. And they were about to give up hope. In the meantime, a young couple next door with hardly any income enough even to buy groceries were blessed with a child. Before that child was one year old, its father was killed in an automobile accident. The young mother despaired over how she was going to raise that young child by herself with no income and no job to earn an income. The older couple went to the young mother and said, we will help raise your child financially and emotionally. Together the couple and the young mother raised that child to adulthood. The couple was like a second set of parents to the boy. The older couple said, God is good, and treated the boy as if it were their own child. God answered the mother's prayer with a yes, and the couple's prayer with wait for a while. May we ever joyfully and confidently believe that the one who calls upon us to cast our cares upon him loves us and cares for us in a way that he knows is best for us. Now may that peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen. We continue with give thanks with a grateful heart.
we stand for prayer. Our Lord has encouraged us to pray, taught us how to do it. Therefore, let us go to him and know and pray for our church family and for all who cry out to the Lord in their time of suffering. Heavenly Father, we thank you for sending your Son to take away the sins of the world. We also thank you that you have raised him back to his rightful throne, where he continues to rule over all things. May his reign be extended by his word and sacraments, that your will might be done on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, in your mercy, hear. Holy Spirit, through the waters of baptism, you called us out of darkness and into the marvelous light of God's love. We especially give you thanks for the adoption by faith of those who celebrate their baptismal birthdays this week, including Zach, Travis, Kelsey, Connie, and Eleanor. Lord, in your mercy. Lord Jesus, because you are the great physician, as well as the good shepherd of your sheep, we ask that you would grant healing, strength, and comfort to all who are struggling with the afflictions of the body, mind, or soul, especially Beth, Elizabeth, Ruth, Amy, Michelle, Stephen, Trevor, Rebecca, Melody, Rosemary, Lydia, Sarah, Jim, Tom, Jack, Connie, Michelle, Maggie Jo, Madeline, Jenna, Janessa, Judy, Ron, Lois, Gary, and all those whom we lift up to you now silently in our hearts, we pray that you would be with them and grant the strength of knowing that you are with them. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Almighty God, your grace is the only solution for our sin-stained world. The light of your perfect love is the only hope for those who are enveloped by the darkness of death and destruction. Therefore, we turn to you and ask you to come and to be active amongst us, that through us the light of your love, the greatness of your glory, the certainty of your salvation would be made known to others, and we would fulfill your call to be your witnesses in our world. Lord, in your mercy. O oh Lord, work mightily in our, our world according to your gracious wisdom to bring evildoers to justice, to promote peace, to protect the innocent and the vulnerable, and to make genuine liberty available to all peoples. Trusting in your power and goodness, O Lord, we lift up all these things to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. Even as we continue our prayer, O Lord, grant that the course of this world may be so governed by your direction that your church may rejoice in serving you in godly peace and quietness through your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. <clears throat> and hear us now, O Lord and Father, as we pray as you have given us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We join together in the morning prayer. I thank, thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, your dear Son, that, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings may please you, for into your hands are commended my body and 
Bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and Merciful Lord, Lord, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. 